Hi everyone, in this video I'll be focusing on biliary atresia. Some key information about the condition. It is a condition where there is progressive idiopathic uh, necroinflammatory process. <clears throat> Hi everyone, in this video I'll be focusing on biliary atresia. For some background information, it is a condition where there is blockage and distraction of the extrahepatic biliary tree ducts, which results in the obstruction of bile flow. It is caused by an idiopathic inflammatory process, and it can involve a segment or the entire extrahepati extrahepatic biliary tract. It has an incidence of 1 in 14,000, and it is a very important cause of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in newborns that needs to be excluded in any jaundiced baby. It is the commonest cause of neonatal jaundice that is surgically treatable, and very importantly, it is fatal without surgery. In terms of risk factors, it tends to be more common in female neonates. With regards to clinical presentation, as I mentioned earlier, it tends to present early on in life, so it presents within the first eight weeks of life. And the key triad to look out for in a child who suffers from biliary atresia is dark urine, chalk colored stools, and jaundice. And those are the key descriptive symptoms of someone suffering from obstructive jaundice. Some other things that can be noticed are abdominal distension as well as bruising and failure to thrive. Multiple investigations can be ordered but the key ones are liver enzymes and bilirubin levels, an ultrasound of the abdomen as well as cholangiography. Liver enzymes will be elevated specifically AST, ALT and GGT and testing for bilirubin will show high levels of conjugated bilirubin but normal levels of unconjugated bilirubin. An ultrasound of the abdomen can show possible liver enlargement and it may also highlight the biliary tract abnormalities. Cholangiography provides the definite diagnosis and it would directly show the blockage in a part of all of the biliary tree. However, it is also important to conduct some other tests which can exclude other conditions. So things such as a chloride sweat test to look out for cystic fibrosis, serum alpha-1 antitrypsin levels to see whether there's an AT1T deficiency, as well as prothrombin and ionine to be checked to see whether they might be elevated as some patients may have easy bruising, um, etc. In terms of management, surgical correction is necessary and it is the cassia operation where the obstructed ducts get removed the small intestine is cut and it connects now directly to the stomach but also a part of it will be connected directly to the liver to compensate for the lack of those extra hepatobiliary ducts Ursodeoxycholic acid can be used to help manage some of the symptoms. However, most patients require a liver transplant. And indeed, a third of patients suffering from biliary atresia need a liver transplant by the age of two. I would like to talk a bit about the complications and prognosis of the condition. The main complications include unsuccessful anastomosis, progressive liver disease, cirrhosis and hepatociliary carcinoma. The condition will cause death if it is left untreated and as I mentioned earlier a third of patients require liver transplant very early on in life. However those who have a successful surgery have a good prognosis overall. This is a very quick overview of the condition. If you have any questions about it please leave them down in the comments. Other than that thank you so much for watching.